What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. Now another question I get asked all the time is what's the meta, what's the meta, and what's the meta? Now um, currently there's just a lot of viable ways to be able to do Chaos 7. However in my opinion there's two really easier ways to get it done and that is Flame Aura plus anything else or weapon manufacturer plus anything else. So today I'm actually going to kind of double dip on those and we are going to do a weapon manufacturer flame aura build and one of the things that makes this build so powerful is flame auras and weapon mans both hit ground and air defenses which is uh, crucial for chaos 7. Uh, currently, the Cobalts, of course, are the special enemy in Chaos 7, and it is very important that you take these guys down. They do come out of the regular lanes with the other mobs, yet they are flyers. So we're going to bring along uh, some Squire Walls here with a maxed out totem. We're going to go with some weapon manufacturers with Defense Power, Defense Crit, Defense Speed on a medallion, and then Defense Rate, Deadly Strikes, and Power Transfer. Now, if I had a max medallion... I would probably get rid of defense rate and put in the extra nodes. However, since I don't, I like the speed of them getting down to the cap with the defense rate shard in the mix. Now, the reason I go with a medallion, although uh, weapon manufacturers do scale amazingly well with crit, I go with a medallion for one reason, and uh, that is, first off, power transfer. I guess it's two reasons. Power transfer is very, very strong, and it can basically turn a medallion into a mark quality uh, crit scaling item so uh, of course I got the power transfer in the mix plus I'm also using power pylon on the squire which is works just wonderfully with weapon mans as it's so easy to place them now for the flame Mars, I'm gonna be using this mark I'm using this mark because it is my best damaging relic not because by choice I would almost rather use a medallion I think with uh, you know, with defense or defense power, defense crit, and defense speed, and then uh, go with power transfer on it as well. Now I am using power transfer plus defense critical damage, and since this is a max item, I actually got rid of defense rate and just going with deadly strikes as my third. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy rolling. Now, like I said, the power of the build is just because flame Mars and weapon mans both hit everything so too awesome you know we just got the three nodes so we're just going to go three in each one and then i think we'll try let's go two flame auras on each entrance right at the spawn camp there now this is a flyer lane here so i am going to use a couple of flame auras for flyer control those two guys right there and then basically we're going to rinse and repeat with the three nodes plus the two flame Rs on each one of the entrances. So let's see, let's see how far over we can squeeze them. That's actually pretty darn good right there. Now right here we've got another flyer lane. However, the pathing is just wonderful. If you go right between that little lantern post there and then this light up top, that is about the perfect place to put a flame R for flyer coverage. So that's how we're gonna do it. And then down below, once again, three three weapon man nodes plus two flame Rs. And we'll do the same thing. Try to do the old side by side on them there. How's the coverage there? Yeah, it's good enough on that wall. And then up here. Now up here I'd like to go a little bit heavier with the flame Rs, and the reason being is that West Gate lock is just right there so um i try to go three flame r's here and i try to get them in in a manner where all three of them are going to hit the bads right at spawn essentially and then that gives us some nice overlapping lapping coverage for a blockade there and then let's we're going to spread those weapon mans out that way to make sure we're getting maximum coverage versus any cobalts that might want to take a shot 
over at my Westgate lock. Now we've got 40 DU left. Do with that whatever you like. Let's do the old EV swapperoo there to take care of the bug and get this thing rolling. I usually don't find that I actually need that additional 40 DU. Now this is another build I was using right away in Chaos 7. Uh, of course now I've got uh, quite a bit better gear, but you can use this build with the lower end Chaos 7 or high end Chaos 6 gear, but you are going to have to watch your walls, make sure you're throwing some upgrades and repairs on them as necessary. And I probably should actually be defending this other side, as every now and then, even with this build, that Westgate lock objective will go down. And uh, then, of course, you have to do some uh, some rebuilding at the break to cover that lower lane. Very nice. And I usually try not to stop this map for very long, as uh, this is, in my opinion, this is the easiest of the Chaos 7 maps. Um, you get 250 DU per lane, essentially. And that, you know, it makes it just a win. So uh, I like to try to go ahead and just get this, get this map rolling right away and kind of upgrade on the fly, uh, particularly for the first two waves. You don't really have to add a whole, whole lot of damage into the mix yourself. Now, of course, I'm not going to let any uh, damage opportunities pass me by, as I just want to shoot stuff in the face. I definitely usually always go two ups in these flyer uh, RS. This one here doesn't get wonderful coverage. They just dip into it right at the end. However, the placement still works. You can actually get away with not using that one at all and just using this one up top, to be honest with you. Let's go get this ogre chewed up here. There we go. Very nice. Didn't get a stomp off. Not that it matters. That's the other beauty of uh, ours and Weapon Man's is... Nothing's going to do him any damage. Well, that's just awesome. And I really didn't need that upgrade on that uh, that flyer R there, but... It's there. What you going to do? I can't take it back now. <laughs> anyway, we got Wave 3 rolling out here. As you see, we have had essentially no pressure. Now, of course, that's uh, my 900 Ascension talking. Uh, plus having, although not perfect some pretty darn piece, good pieces of loot and maybe one day I'll get that elusive max medallion like everyone around me seems to find constantly <laughs> one day come on out there Meiji the bad part about spawn camping is without a doubt the mages sometimes they like to like to stay parked in there and make life a little difficult for you definitely had to be careful around this side too jumping around with those assassins with that objective there as things can can definitely get a little bit ugly sometimes and let's just go ahead and fire that one up again. I am going to throw one. Actually, I don't even need it. I was going to throw another up on that, uh, the flyer flame R there, but it's completely unnecessary. Tier 3 is more than enough on all of these R's. Now, with weapon manufacturers in the mix, of course, that frees up quite a bit of green mana. So you can actually get quite, quite a few of your defenses all the way up to Tier 5 if you choose to. A little derpy derp on the jump there. Wouldn't be a juice bags video without it. Luckily no cliffs to fall off of on this one. <laughs> it's the only map I can do without jumping off the cliff. Alright, we got a siege roller coming up from the far side here. Try to get uh, get myself up to full health before he comes out and starts shooting his stuff at me. A 
Alright, let's see what we can do to this guy here before he kills us. If he kills us, I'm sure he's going to kill us. <laughs> I die to these guys almost every time, at least once. And then you come out and just steamroll them and it's no problem. Ooh. Close one there. Oh, he got me. That weapon man will have him dead before I, uh, before I res up. You know, the weapon manufacturers and uh, the spike blockades do do some acceptable damage to the rollers. You see, in the time it took me to uh, respawn there, it did about a million damage. And we got a legendary. Well, not the greatest bow out there, but... And only 45 ups. But it's still nice to see the beautiful, beautiful legendaries on the map. Come on, it's like Kellyon just die already. Now, I tell you, some of these bosses, you pop poisonous tips or sandstorm or whatever with these cure damage lazy builds and oh my gosh they just evaporate just crazy only 124 bads left so you know of course it's not over yet but it's definitely looking like some face roll right here Now, since we got essentially two different meta defenses in the mix at the same time here, I'm going to just go ahead and call this one the super meta. <laughs> now, uh, either one of these strats, or any either one of these defenses, I should say, are completely viable just by themselves, even. You can just go flame ours walls. You can just go weapon manufacturers and walls. Now, when I'm actually grinding the map solo and trying to get lots and lots and lots of runs in, I do that all the time. I go just weapon mans. You, you know, you throw down as many nodes as your DU will allow for it, and it's pretty much good game. Even without using any sort of the glitches or anything, you still just get it done. Ooh, looks like I'm gonna lose that wall. That's all right. Let's see if we can get him burned down, at least to an acceptable level. We might. Oh no, I spoke too soon gonna say I might be able to get him down on that one. You can do it if you dodge and weave. I'm just way too lazy for it. It's so much easier just to stand there and spam left click, you know? <laughs> and spike blockade down. But we got a pet and it's now over. So that is the uh, the Spring Forward Era Super Meta. Uh, use the flame arm plus anything else or the weapon manufacturer plus anything else and you will definitely get the job done. So that will do it for now. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.